Hey, what's up? Silas here. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about politicians, just global politics, just to kind of test your knowledge and see how much do you actually know about politicians in other countries. I'm going to be giving you a list of certain people, quiz of sorts, where I'm going to tell you when they were in power, the things that they did, how they came out of power, if you saw these things in the news and see how many of them you can actually point out. But first, let me give you some background to kind of why I'm doing this. So I used to say that it was ridiculous that people in the United States of America, the world's supposed best country, uh, knew little to nothing about other countries. And even though I still agree with their lack of knowledge, their general lack of knowledge in the United States of America, I no longer think that it's a ridiculous thing that this is kind of how it is. The USA, after all, is the preeminent, if not the world's sole superpower. And we care more about things that we look up to than we do to things that we want to avoid to be like. For example, if you are trying to be in shape, you're trying to get into a workout, you're going to care more about what the top bodybuilders, the top athletes are working out with, rather than somebody who is maybe slovenly sitting down at home, overweight, you're not going to walk into some fast food place and be like, oh, I wonder what that guy's doing for his kind of a workout and whatnot. So yeah, um, so this awareness goes past politics. You will find that your average Kenyan hip hop head football fan or fashionista knows more about American artists, the English Premier League, or fashion trends coming from the runways in Milan, respectively, than they would about the local equivalents here in Kenya. And let alone here in Kenya, but going as further as you wouldn't expect them to know the way. Oh, do, do you know the way? <laughs> this Ugandan knuckles thing. <laughs> that means <is> so funny. <laughs> You wouldn't expect them to know the way these things are done by the equivalent people, the artists, the athletes, the designers in neighboring Uganda. You'd expect them in general to know more about the United States of America and places like that than you would this local situation. So aspects of the United States of America also ran like businesses with the most effective marketing campaign ever. That's how the United States of America itself is ran. And this is a bit of an aside, but if you actually begin to grasp how ubiquitous that the state in the United States of America is, how it's everywhere, yet it can still maintain this plausible deniability of all the negative things that come from the state, then I think it's simple to understand how that religious mindset of believing in an omnipresent, omnipowerful being that also allows evil to occur is welcomed by large parts of the United States population. I think that's that's something like, hey, once you kind of notice the two, you're like, oh, no wonder there's so many religious people in that country or people of the faith. Because as I've mentioned in previous videos, Religion, statism itself, is a religion. You can have religious thought without believing in in outright theology. Okay, so recently I met a relative that I hadn't seen in almost a decade, and we were debating whether your average rural Kenyan knew more about geopolitics than your average rural American Trump voter. And we didn't have much to go on besides some anecdotal evidence, like I having gone to college in West Liberty, West Virginia, which is a small town above Wheeling, West Virginia, third biggest city in West Virginia, a state in the Ohio Valley County area, and having little to no discussions about politics with anyone from our ancest shared ancestral lands in Western Kenya. And their claims were drawn from having had a few of those conversations while visiting the ancestral lands, visiting Luya land in Western Kenya, and also having traveled to some of the southern states in the United States of America. So we could also both draw from extensive coverage that the media has had also and part of the marketing in the whole American dream trademark is, of course, American media goes out and finds these people and interviews them. But as I pointed out to him, there's also videos where people go out and they find people in cities, liberals in cities, and you get 100 hours of footage or let's say 10 hours of footage and you can cut it down to a 10 minute video of finding anyone with any political bent saying some really absurd, low, low information type things. So anyway, um, that was only part of a far-ranging discussion that we had, and we did reach many conclusions, but was really enjoying engaging in this kind of thing. It's kind of things I like doing here on the videos and my channel, also in my personal life. And I thought about this for some time, though. When you're walking around Nairobi and you see Matatu spray-painted with images of foreign media stars, we speak English, which is a foreign language. We worship in churches that are based off of theologies from foreign lands. And is this just globalization or a devaluation of the local? Is there even a local to compete with this globalized kind of culture and identity? So in order to test this hypothesis, that's why I decided, hey, let me actually create this quiz 
and see in general you guys watching this channel, whoever may come to this video, and test and see your knowledge about the world in general, world leaders. How much do you know from just hearing about, hey, this negative thing has happened in this one place, did we hear about it? Or do we know more about our own countries? Or hey, maybe some of these people could be actually from the country that you live in, depending on where you're listening this from, and have you heard of these people before? So yeah, let's get into the quiz now. See how many countries or leaders you can identify in this quiz. So as I mentioned, the recent president of South Korea from 2013 to 2017 was one Park Gwen Yi. Park was formally ousted from office and arrested in March 2017 over allegations that she colluded with a confidant to take tens of millions of dollars from companies and bribes and through extortion and also allowed the friends to manipulate affairs from the shadows. She apologized for putting trust in her friend, Choi Soon Sil, but denied any criminal wrongdoing. She called the trial political revenge and declined to attend sessions. So now she's in there and... Um, where to see what's going to happen, if she's going to get arrested, if she's going to get time. So this is something that you should have heard of. This was something that was in the news. And part of the reason I'm making this quiz is because it was in the news and I saw it. And some of you may have heard it. Now I'm going to go into other people, other politicians that you may or may not have heard of. Like, remember, after I ask the question, you can pause and kind of give it a think. But don't go searching online for the answers. Wait till the end of this and then I'll go over the answers and you can see how you do. So... First in the quiz is someone who held power after World War II, from 1948 to 1960. Though communication technology at the time was not that accessible to the general public, it was in its infancy compared to what we have today. But this is also a time, it being after the World Wars, the Second World Wars, as Dr. Victor David Hansen excellently puts it, because it was like a group of different wars in different areas all over the world. It wasn't just like one big major world war, it was like, Okay, the Japanese are fighting the Chinese, and then, like, somebody else. That war kind of continues, and somewhere else in the world, the North Africans start fighting the Germans, or the Germans are fighting somebody else in North Africa, so it's Second World War. Anyway, <laughs> digressing. Getting back to this thing. So the first guy was right after the war. A lot of time was focusing on this. A lot of people were focusing on the World War. It's been a study time ever since, and um, it's the oldest time period in this quiz. But it also could be one of the one most likely for people to have heard of, because as I mentioned, a lot of people have been paying attention. There's a lot of historians and people like that, a lot of shows and Discovery Channel type things that focus on this. So let's get to this. As I said, 1948 to 1960. This U.S.-educated Christian leader and independence fighter became this country's first president in 1948, with help from a foreign country, three years after the region was liberated from colonial rule at the end of World War II. Their government became increasingly authoritarian, especially after an early 50s war with its neighbors. Critics accused the leader of corruption and nepotism as they attempted to prolong their hold on power. They won their fourth presidential term in the early 60s amid widespread suspicions of vote rigging. This triggered nationwide protests that forced them to flee the country into exile, where they died in 1965. So that's it for the first person on this quiz. So in a 2002 survey taken by People Press, 80% of the 29-year-olds polled said that they got their news from television. And when another poll was taken by the same company in 2010, that number dropped to 50%. Whereas polls taken over that same time period, 2002 to 2010, it said that people who were getting the news from the internet jumped from 23% to 65%. Now, looking at the YouTube analytics, 45% of my viewers are between 25 and 34. So some of you may recall having heard of this person's time in power that spanned from 2003 to 2008, as their life came to a rather unusual end, even for a list like this. So this individual leaped to their death in 2009, a year after their tenure ended, amid allegations that their family members took bribes from businessmen during their presidency. Their oldest sibling was sentenced in 2009 to two and a half years in prison for influence peddling, but was later pardoned. Lawmakers in 2004 had voted to impeach them on allegations of incompetence and election law violations, but the Constitutional Court reinstated them two months later, saying that the accusations were not serious enough to justify their unseating. So that's it for number two. Um, suicide is a thing that's been, been something odd for me to just think of. Um, I've had some experience with people that have been suicidal or attempted it in the past, rather young age. I think I started meeting some in high school. 
And um, just thinking about it, how sure you have to be, like, I'm not a believer in any theology, so just, I know, in, if you have a belief in theology, you can believe in life after death, and you have some kind of solidish idea of it, so maybe you have a confidence that if you pass, you have something to move on to, but then just thinking about that, how someone's like, life is so horrible that no matter what is coming after, ending it is better, which is just, it's, it's something it's something odd to me, something I can't really uh, wrap my head around, but separate video for that, <laughs> more digressions. Um, okay, so now on to the middle of the pack of the time spans. This is 1988 to 1983. So the World Wide Web had become public in 1991, but the online information sphere as it is today was likely not even imaginable at this point in time, but if it did exist at that time, you likely would have heard about this leader mentioned on international news sites such as the Drudge Report to local gossip celebrity blogs due to a particular personal acquaintance that this next entry had. So on to this next one. This individual, who had been friends with the previous president while they were both in the army, won the 1987 election of their country thanks largely to divided votes among opposition liberal candidates. Both this individual and their friend slash previous ruler were arrested in late 1995 on charges of taking bribes from businessmen while in office. They were also indicted on mutiny and treason charges stemming from a coup at the end of the 70s and a bloody crackdown on pro-democracy protests that killed hundreds in one of the nation's southern cities soon after the coup. Their friend slash previous leader was initially sentenced to death while this individual received a sentence of 22 and a half years in jail in 1996. The nation's Supreme Court in 1997 ruled on changing that death sentence to life imprisonment and reduced the 22 and a half year sentence to 12 years. Both were released by a presidential pardon later that year. So that's it for number three on the list. How many have you gotten? Are you a history buff? Do you guys like history? I mean, political history. How much do you actually know about some of these things? When it comes to history, it's something that's all around us. It's something that people use, something that people build upon. But I don't think people really have an understanding of what it actually is. Like, the information is there. And even if you hear about the stuff, you're like, okay, what am I going to do with that? What kind of sense does that make to me? And talking about that, let's get into some jargon onto the internet and other things like that. So in January 1st, 1983, the NCP on the ARPANET was replaced by the more flexible and powerful family of TCP slash IP protocols. Now, 30% of my viewers are between 35 and 44. So these were people who were in their infancy to the pre-teens during the time that this leader was in power, which is 1980 to 1988. So this spun from pre-internet access and television was likely still lagging behind radio, where in 1987 you could have heard Reagan's iconic speech featuring the line, Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. That's a horrible Ronald Reagan impression. <laughs> I could do better if I actually had to listen to Reagan right before I do this, but uh, I don't know, uh, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> going into this next person. Okay, this individual an army general, and their military cronies drove tanks and troops into the capital of the country to seize power in a coup in late 1979 that ended the interim government of the acting president following the death of a recently assassinated president. During the summertime eight years later, massive pro-democracy demonstrations forced their government to accept a constitutional revision for direct presidential elections. After their tenure ended, they spent two years in exile in a remote religious complex amid public calls for their punishment over corruption and human rights abuses. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of exiles in this list and things like that, and uh, as you can see, some of them should have made the news. Something like driving tanks into a city. I know this is the 80s and things like that, but I think there was still a lot of coverage. When was Tiananmen Square? Okay, I'm kind of giving that away that this isn't China by saying... Tiananmen Square. No, but Tiananmen Square, that was like people coming against the actual uh, embedded government, so that wouldn't really be a giveaway of who this person could have been. So even though you're not getting it directly on Twitter or things like that, there was still an ability to get information like this. But talking about phones and things like that, the first smartphone was developed by IBM and Bell South, which came out to the public in 1993. Although basic compared to today's standard Simon, 
had a touchscreen, and was capable of accessing email and sending faxes. <laughs> faxes. Wow. <laughs> um, it's actually possible that some of the people listening to this are like, what's, what, what is a fax? It's definitely possible that a lot of people that are listening to this have never actually seen a fax machine or actually gotten a fax machine. Wait, there weren't separate fax machines. Fax machines were only just like the printers, and then they would just come in and come out through the printer. Well, they had the printer slash fax machine things. I still remember. I think we still actually... Yeah, I might be looking at one. No, I'm not looking at one right now. Anyway, <laughs> so, though the tech developed relatively fast, if not exponentially, having access to something is different than incorporating its usage into your life. My first smartphone was a Motorola Razr, and I mostly just played Tetris on it. I didn't even load it up with, like, little phone plans. I think after the first month of it, I was like, ah, no, Tetris. Too expensive. Uh, this leader, featured in this next question, began their rule in 1993, and had it last until the year I entered my freshman year in high school. So that's 1993 to 1998. So this individual, whose election formally ended military rule in the country, initially enjoyed strong support for their ambitious anti-corruption drives. That was before their popularity nosedived amid the late 1990s regional financial crisis, which toppled some of the nation's biggest companies and forced their government to accept tens of billions of dollars from the International Monetary Fund. Critics accused them of mismanaging the economy, and they left office amid a corruption scandal that saw their child arrested and imprisoned. So this is getting into the familial things, and I don't know if this is necessarily like the families in general, where you get into certain things, you're attracted, you're met by certain people, you have certain temptations, and you get into that point where it's like, hey, we end up all being corrupt. I don't think it's like a genetic thing where just people are just corrupt more than others. And yeah, so moving on. That was number five. Now to the next one. CNN was founded a year after the 1961 to 1979 time and power of this next leader. Now about 15% of my viewers are above 45 years old, and so they may have read about this in their local newspaper or some major international one at the time, like maybe the Washington Post or the Daily Telegraph. And also talking about that, how do things happen, how the leader comes in and then the people come in, the son, the family, the people related to become corrupt. It's kind of a thing where I think with CNN, I don't know, there's some issues with how the mass media has become the way it is right now. The mainstream media, how, not that necessarily the fake news, but the foreign news, where they're telling you things that, are you like, is this really news? Is this really newsworthy? Shouldn't you be telling about other things? But anyway, so back to this leader. This is number six on this quiz. This individual, at the time, an army general, came to power with a coup in the early 60s, which overturned another government elected after an earlier president had resigned. So a lot of different things here. The leader had been credited with industrial policies that drove the country's rapid economic growth during the 1960s and 70s. Critics remember this leader as a ruthless dictator who jailed, tortured, and executed dissidents. They were assassinated by their spy chief during a late-night drinking session in 1979. See, that's another auspicious end here. Is auspicious the right word here? I'm not, I'm not even going to look it up. I'm just going to go with it. Auspicious end. But yeah, assassination by your supposed friend. And this is the kind of situation where I think when you get to these positions of power, if you're doing it in a certain way, first of all, these positions in general attract some kind of cutthroat kind of people. And then if you become cutthroat, those are the people you have to surround yourself with. And then you get in these kind of situations where, hey, your drinking buddy could be the person to put that knife in your back or your front or uh, shoot uh, missiles full of knives to drop at you from far, far away. I don't necessarily know how this execution was done, but uh, maybe if you know who this person was, you know how that execution was done, or you can look them up after I give the answers at the end of this quiz. So, the next leader that held power from 1998 to 2003 brought their country from the 20th century to the 21st, with hopes of settling a long-standing dispute with a neighboring enemy. This brought international attention to our presidency that, if you had been picking up on the trend in this quiz, did not end well. So, so as a longtime opposition leader and democracy activist, this individual rose to the presidency and held an unprecedented summit with a leader of their main antagonist in the year 2000. They were awarded a prestigious annual international award that year, and they left office tainted by corruption scandals involving AIDS and three of their four children. They were also accused of having one of the country's largest private companies allegedly pay more than hundreds of millions to the aforementioned country 
before the summit. So yeah, that's kind of the suspicions that people have. Uh, right now, there's some current issues in uh, people wondering why does the United States of America want to talk to North Korea in this kind of situation, and they're wondering who is really interested in this, what are the political machinations. People always wonder, why are these two countries fighting? And when the two countries want to stop fighting, there's also the questions, why do these two countries, or three countries, or four countries, or whoever people, want to stop fighting? So there's all these situations, and hey, sometimes it's just people get paid off. And I think if you look more into economics, you'll notice that economics are a lot of reasons why most countries fight. There's correlation does not imply causation kind of thing, but when uh, goods cross borders, missiles don't. I don't know who said that. There's a saying kind of like that about how you don't really fight the people that you're trading. And I think there's also this one thing, like United States of America has not bombed any country that has a McDonald's. Kenya doesn't have a McDonald's. I think Kenyans need to get on the whole McDonald's thing. So that was number seven. Now moving on to the next one. An op-ed in the New York Times claimed that the early 2010s was the golden age of reporting. So considering that, this should have definitely made one of these golden age newspapers. This was a golden age story, right? So do any of you out there remember a mention of this leader during the time that they were in power? That was from 2008 to 2013, being reported on in any of this golden age of reporting time. So, this conservative individual's victory which ended a decade of liberal rule in that country, reflected voters' hopes that the former successful CEO would revive a bad economy. Their popularity declined over unmet economic promises and policies that critics saw as attacks on freedom of speech. They left office with a rock-bottom popularity amid a series of corruption scandals surrounding family members and key government figures. Prosecutors in that country have recently arrested in 2018 the now 76-year-old over various corruption allegations, including suspicions that they took a total of $10 million in their local currency in bribes from that country or that leader's own intelligence agency, companies, and others. Prosecutors also allege that this leader used a private company as a channel to establish illicit slush funds totaling $3 million, embezzled official funds, and evaded taxes. So yeah, this is something that uh, former candidate for the United States of America, Hillary Clinton, and other people are being accused of. People are saying Donald J. Trump has done things like this. So these are things that you hear about in the news. This is a common thing with politicians all over the world. So I'm wondering, this was rather recent, 2018 to 2013. Have you heard of this person? Does this ring any bells to you? This corruption? Or are people just so used to, so commonly accepting of this level of corruption. When you talk about this kind of money, $10 million, $33 million, you have certain developed developing countries or just even developed countries where people commit relatively petty crimes. Like for example, in, I remember this when I was a kid, you'd have a situation where somebody would steal like some potatoes. I had this conversation with somebody in, uh, in one of my, one of my videos was back and forth talking about how different crimes and things are approached in developing countries and saying in Kenya that somebody had stolen some potatoes and then the people pounced on him. Some people, a mob kind of came up and it was a lynch mob. They beat this person down and set the person on fire. And, uh, the general people around kind of accepted it. I mean, they didn't jump in to stop him. I don't know if I would have jumped in to stop him because the kind of situation like you jump in and you catch some of the ire of this mob and then you kind of wanted that kind of situation. I don't know what I would have done. It's kind of a situation where I can't really make up my mind on what would happen in that situation until you're in that situation. But one thing that's always bothered me is how the regular populace, I think they can understand if this person steals this sack of potatoes, they can relate to being in the farm, planting potatoes, waiting the time, harvesting the potatoes, the price of potatoes, and realizing that, hey, this person has stolen food from the potato owner, from the store owner, from wherever the, the farmer is, and his that farmer's kids could starve. I'm starving, or I've worked on potatoes, so they can understand that kind of theft. But when it comes to the theft of their government officials taking, embezzling tens of millions of dollars, I don't think they can grasp it that well. So they come in and they have a situation where you look at those people and you still consider them honorable politicians, honorable members of parliament, honorable His Excellency the President, etc., etc. And that's a very disturbing and odd thing about society in general. So that was um, actually the last one on this test. <laughs> we came to the end there, surprisingly, without me actually looking in. Wrote this down on the list. So kind of just thinking about what do you guys think? What do you guys think about this list? Have you actually thought of who these people were? So yeah, as I said, end of the quiz. 
this is the last time where you can pause, you can go back, and you can hear them out again, and you can think, okay, who can actually tell who these people are? And I'm going to now tell you who these people were. Like I said, pause and go back and check if you want to do this without it being a spoiler. So the first one, this was right after World War II, the Christian leader. This was Sing Man Ri, who was um, a South Korean politician. Next, we move to 2003 to 2008. This was an individual that leaped to their death in 2009. This was Ro Mu Hyun. This was again a South Korean politician. Now next is 1988 to 1993. And this individual who was friends with the previous president of their country while they were in the army. This is Ro Tai Woo of South Korea. So far, how many have you got? So next is this was an individual who was an army general who drove the tanks into the city. So this would have been big news. It should have been big news. You'd think it would be big news driving tanks into an actual modern city in the 1980s. So it's 1980 to 1988. And we have Chun Doo Hwan. Again, South Korean politician. Now next we had an individual who ended a military role in the country. And um, this was 1993 to 1998. And we have Kim Yong-sam. This is again a South Korean politician. Excuse me if I'm butchering these names, but uh, I'm just trying to do my best here. I did my best. Did my best. The Dane Cook thing. Uh, I I thought Dane Cook was kind of funny. Um, I guess like some of his stuff, the really vicious circle. They, when he first broke in the scene, I was like, oh, that's kind of funny. But but I guess I can also kind of see why people might think he's not that funny. And then of course the copying of things that could uh, rub people the wrong way. But uh, digression. Excuse me for that. Getting back to this, next guy is uh, 1961 to 1979. This individual went past just the corruption of embezzling money and actually went to tortures and executions of dissidents. So this should have been newsworthy, even though it was back in the 60s to the 70s. It was kind of a long time, 20 years almost in power. Uh, this is Park Chung-hee. Again, this is a South Korean politician. But yeah, with what they were doing with killing people, for them to actually meet their end being assassinated, it's kind of not too surprising. And also that previous president that I told you about with driving the tanks into the city, this was the attempted coup or the temporary coup that that coup actually overthrew and then ended up getting that person in power. This person that assassinated the president was involved in this coup and then they got booted out by tanks in the city, in the capital city, in Seoul, South Korea. So... Now we're moving on to the last person. You might have been noticing a trend of this. So now this was a person from 1998 to 2003, the opposition leader that had this unprecedented summit, peace summit with somebody. Guess what country this was? It was South Korea, and this was Kim Dae-jung. And he had a summit with Kim Jong-il, the father of Kim Jong-un, who's going to have a summit meeting thing soon with uh, President Donald J. Trump of the United States of America. And um, that actually won Kim Dae-jung a Nobel Peace Prize of that year. That's when you actually had to do stuff before you actually got the Nobel Peace Prize, unlike one former President Barack Obama. But that's neither here nor there. Okay, it's here, but it's not there. So we're going to move on to the last person. Now, okay, trend going on here. I think you guys know this one. This is a conservative individual who ended a decade of liberal rule, so this is both sides of things, a lot of embezzlement, as I mentioned during the whole thing, the embezzlement thing really, really weirds me out to this kind of situation, the monetary thing, because, okay, yes, when you go out and you actually kill people, imprison people, people can see that directly, and it seems like bad, 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 but the actual knockdown effect of embezzlement and stealing millions of currency from your peoples is also very damaging in a lot of different ways. Um, the cost of lost opportunities, like, you can see somebody dying and someone you're being killed, and I'm like, okay, that person's missing the family, but you don't necessarily see when somebody's like, hey, this entire town could have had how many more kids born if the people could afford it, could have jobs and things like that. But anyway, so this last person, 2008 to 2013, was Lee Myung Bak, and that was, again, South Korea. So part of this whole process, this was an article I found, there's going to be links below to that article, was this news article I found after talking about this whole situation with... Uh, the South Korean president, and I saw like, hey, wow, South Korea has actually had president after president after president that were corrupt, that had political issues. And we talk about how, yes, developing world has issues, and it does. But this whole idea that, oh, Africa is just the worst place ever, Latin America is the worst place ever, the West is the best, 
And the West is right now a lot better than a lot of other places, comparatively. But I think there's this big blind spot we have as members of the Western world, and I'd say even the colonial countries, the Commonwealth countries, etc., etc., are part of the Western world. I would think if you look at Africa in general, and you're honest with yourself, you would consider Africa to be more part of the Western world than the Eastern world. Now, something like India, you'd consider that parts of the Eastern world and things like that. But Asia, the Orient, now they're coming into Africa more, and there's questions about what's happening with that. But I think there's a lot we don't really understand about Asia, in my opinion, Asians are often political ninjas when it comes to things, when it comes to the machinations that you talk about there. Not only how little the actual communist revolution and Mao Zedong are talked about when you talk about the actual evils of communism and collectivism and things like this, because that's also overlooked with Russia, but then also Russia itself has, like, Siberia is a part of Russia, and I think Russia might be the biggest country by landmass, and Siberia itself is part of Russia, but that takes up a large part of Northern Asia. And then now you have like the Kazakhs, you have some of the Eastern European places where it's kind of mixed with the populaces where are these people Asian, are they Oriental, are they Caucasian, white, or however you want to define that. There's a blurring in the lines here. So it's kind of an interesting situation there. How people in that part of the world, I think are invisible. Now this whole reason of, hey, you should know more about these countries. Hey, you should know more about that countries. It's only a limited time in the day. Like I could have probably made this list with a lot of different countries and just gone to one country and listed off the different leaders. Could probably do this with the United States of America in some way. But anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. And I'm going to finish this off with the Song of the Post. I might start adding this Song of the Post and manga or other information suggestion of the post. And what I've been drawing in here, I'll get to that in the manga. But Song of the Post is Imagine by John Lennon. So, in my whole thought of this, imagine if people really knew what the lyrics of this song meant. Imagine a time when you don't have to imagine being able to find out, but you could just look it up right now. You could pause this video, or after this video, you could find out exactly what Imagine's lyrics mean. Imagine that you don't have to imagine that, because you can do it. You can do it right now. So if you don't know what these lyrics actually mean, go look up what kind of commie shenanigans John Lennon was kind of up to here. <laughs> Like some of the situations, you know, it's a great song. I I still bump to the song. I, I guess you can't really bump to imagine, but it's still, musically, it is pleasing to your ears. But mentally, when I actually hear the lyrics and it kind of makes sense, actually, I'm like, you, John Lennon. Anyway, so manga suggestion is Akumetsu. This is what I've been drawing on the screen. is is inspired by Akumetsu, which I've, I've read a lot of manga and anime. Well, watched anime. Manga is pretty much the name of comic books in Japan, and then when it's South Korea, it's called a manhua, and I don't know, I guess you would also call it manhua in North Korea if they had them, because it's, I think it's a Korean name for manga, and I don't know what they call it in China, if they have a specific name from it, but China also has an industry coming up, and then of course I watched anime, because the anime is the cartoon animated versions of it, and um, I prefer reading subtitles because of just the inflections and the voices that people use where some things can be lost in translation unless they're actually made for that. But anyway, uh, coming back to the thing, some authors really get into some really intense topics. They have like the regular slice of life things or they have other international things where you could have like the lead, the CEO of a top company there reading the same thing that maybe the cafeteria lady's son is reading in high school. The, the crossover in the material of this topic and any genre you can think of. So I think I'll be adding more of these kind of suggestions for people who are not familiar with it or people who are familiar, get at me, we can talk about it. <laughs> I might have a separate section for this. But anyway, so Akumetsu. The synopsis of this is Nagasawa Shina was just your average third year high schooler when her father's company went bankrupt. To ease the strain on her family, she secretly begins prostituting herself. At her first job, a mysterious masked man crashes the party, and it's someone she knows. Akumetsu is a story of Hazama Sho, who defends his own view of justice in a vigilante manner while wearing a mask and calling himself Akumetsu. So yeah, this this manga is <laughs> it's completely ultra-violence in the sense discussed in A Clockwork Orange, the Stanley Kubrick film, and who wrote the book? I forget who wrote the book. Anyway, um... So this sort of thing that made me find like those 
ultra violent scenes in Kill Bill, like the one Spider Manga and anime, just tame. I was like, okay, I'm used to that. I've seen stuff like this. There's some really gory things in this. But it also goes into some really deep political issues, questioning the structures of the state and just the problems that exist in society. And I need to keep reminding people about this. When I talk about the state, I'm not talking about governments in general. I have no problem with structures of people coming together and choosing to live under certain laws and rules and saying we're going to elect or empower certain people to enforce these laws and rules. But that's not what the state is. The state itself is above the rules it sets for the people under the state. The state is a body of people or a group or a person that has a monopoly on violence over a given area and the peoples and things under that. You don't see that in just, that's not part and parcel of the definition of what a government is. So um, that's it for this. Uh, thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you like this whole quiz type thing. I might do a few other ones with this. These kind of things, kind of as a blind reveal type thing, but just kind of mixing things out. Uh, did you guys figure out what I was doing with this thing earlier on? When did you figure it out? Um, anyway, like, share, and subscribe. There's probably going to be links below to um, this merchandise that I'm drawing. I might make it merchandise. I don't know about the whole copyright issues that are involved or something like this. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. Links below to the merchandise store. Help me out on Patreon if you want, and you can probably get me to draw you something cool, depending on the tier that you enter in. Goodbye.